My name's Jem Savage and I'm based in Geelong, Australia. I'm the associate producer of the Australian Art Orchestra and I'm a sound technician, recording engineer and also an instrumentalist. Uh, today I'm interested in talking about using Max for Live inside Ableton 10 to create some generative MIDI uh, which can be used as a compositional aid, a sound design tool, a practice foil, uh, really myriad purposes. Uh, it's a subject area that I just find fascinating and I seem to return to all the time uh, since I was first exposed to a composer called Karl-Heinz Essel uh, during my undergraduate studies, uh, who's a, also a developer and has a really interesting set of tools for real-time composition using the power of MaxMSP. MaxMSP is a visual programming environment uh, it's something that's of interest to many creatives and, and people working in the arts as it's extremely adaptable whether you're working with live visuals, sound processing, uh, generation of MIDI or creation of audio plugins. Uh, it's an extremely adaptable uh, suite of resources and now it is actually part of Ableton 10 suite, uh, previously being an add-on component. This allows us to delve into Max devices inside the Ableton Live environment, uh, making it very easy to integrate the two and to extend the available feature set in Ableton Live. I thought this video could make a great jumping off point for an introduction into Max patching. Uh, and today I thought we could have a, a patch along and create a MIDI generator uh, that's gonna have a number of variables that we can use to carry out stochastic compositional processes. So by the end we should have a device that is quite malleable, has a number of parameters that can be adjusted to provide a real-time MIDI output that can be associated with a sampler or plug-in uh, to give us an audio output. I'll also show you how the iPad can be used in conjunction with Max for Live devices to get hands-on control over your set. I think it's always advisable to start with a plan before delving into the max patching process. The concept for today's patch would be to create a device which will generate MIDI note messages where the time interval between notes, the note duration, their pitch and velocity are determined by chance operations. I'd imagine this patch having three main sections, one dealing with timing, one dealing with the notes themselves and one the output back to Ableton. Under timing, we're going to generate a random number up to 5,000 to give us a time interval, and we'll add an offset for the desired minimum interval between notes. We'll pass this through a percentage chance that the pulse will then become a note, and a percentage chance that the timing interval will change or be reset after that note. Under notes, we're dealing with pitch and velocity in much the same way by generating a random number between 0 and 127. And we then add an offset for the minimum desired pitch or velocity. Under output, we're passing our pitch and velocity to Max's make note object, as well as a duration calculated as a percentage of the timing interval. We send that to MIDI out and back into Ableton to be received by our plugin or sampler. Okay, so now to realizing our patch in Max for Live, uh, I'm going to save us a lot of time waiting for me to type things by bringing over Max objects that have already had their properties set and populated, and then we'll just uh, work through the data flow of the patch together. So crossing over to Ableton, we've got an empty set uh, with a MIDI track. I'm going to take the Max MIDI effect and place it on the channel. So we just need to press this button to start editing in Max. Okay, so at the very top of our patch, we have this object Metro set for a default value of 1000 milliseconds, one second. Uh, it's not going to be active by default, but I've added a toggle to switch it on and off. And so we'll see a blip here each second. Uh, now, obviously that isn't giving us a great degree of rhythmic variation. So adding these objects to the patch allows us to 
create a random number up to 5,000. I'm thinking of that as a pulse range between zero and five seconds in milliseconds. Uh, and we're also going to set a shortest pulse because we probably don't want to go much faster than 20 events a second is my feeling. And we're going to plug that back into Metro. And so we'll now see this blip uh, arriving at different intervals because the time value has been changed. Uh, now that in itself isn't completely satisfying and it might be better for us to give a percentage chance for the value to change or simply stay the same for each pulse. So we're generating a number between 0 and 99 in this case, 100 options. And then we're going to check is that number less than the value of this control here. If we start to reduce this percentage chance, we should start seeing some zeros. But as we steer that chance back up, we're much more likely to receive a one here. The select object just is going to send the same message as a button does when it blinks. It's a message called bang whenever it receives a one uh, from this operator. We need to pipe that back into our metronome's random number generator remove that patch cord and now we're able to give a chance that the time division will change with each pulsation. So as the chance goes down we see this value changing much less often. Another aspect that we need to control in this area of the patch is the overall density. So whether we're going to pass on every single pulse that's generated or perhaps somewhat less. Uh, so we're using the same kind of logic in this part of the patch. This trigger item is generating that random number 0 to 99, 100 choices, and we're comparing that against the value of the density control. The last aspect we need control of in our timing portion of the patch is duration, and we're going to take our current pulse value and then multiply it by a certain percentage. This brings us to the notes part of our plan. This area of the patch is concerning pitch. Uh, we can see if we plug in our density adjusted pulse output to this trigger item, we're now generating some random MIDI notes here. This is tweakable. Uh, we can select how wide a range of options are being produced by this random uh, number generator and we're also adding an offset for our lowest desired note. We carry out almost the same operation on the velocity side. So we'll take this spare outlet, plug it into the random number generator and then again we're constricting or uh, enlarging the range here and we're just setting the lowest desired value here. This now brings us to output. Uh, the make note object here expects a pitch, velocity, and duration. And we've taken care of those here for pitch, here for velocity, and then our duration output was here. That's piped through into MIDI format and out into uh, Ableton again. Something you may have noticed is that many of the objects have a purple highlight to them. And this is one of the great magic tricks of Max MSP is that it allows us to create what's known as a presentation mode. And the idea of that would be to tuck away all of our untidy patching and create some sort of a user interface. I've tweaked these off camera. We'll save our work and jump back to Ableton. Okay, so back in Ableton, we're going to take a look at the output of our device and uh, sending that on to a plug-in to generate an audio output. Here we have our uh, MIDI device. Let's set some sensible starting points. Now this controls our density. Uh, we'll actually leave that at 100, so it's effectively bypassed. Uh, now let's just choose an instrument. So here we have a marimba uh, modeled in collision. Our output comes on and we're already hearing the results of these uh, stochastic parameters. Uh, now look, clicking these values with a mouse and, uh, and or typing in with the keyboard is fine as a control mechanism, but I'd like to quickly talk about 
something else Makes for Life can do uh, to give us much more hands-on control of these sorts of parameters. Let's jump into our Max for Live patch again and do some minor tweaking. Max has a partner app called Mira that works on the iPad and then an object within Max MSP uh, that will give us a frame to place the controls we wish to interact with onto our iPad screen. And so while I'd often spend a bit more time on this to show how rapidly we can get that working, let's just place that mirror frame directly over our controls while we switch our attention to the iPad. So mirror presents us with uh, an option of connecting by USB or to the A server that it is detected on the same Wi-Fi network. So it's already seeing our patch. I'm just gonna click connect and we see right away here is our uh, controls from the Ableton device on screen and as I touch these I can get quite fine-grained control over these aspects. With a couple of quick tweaks uh, and our session slightly edited I've now got three instrument tracks loaded with our generated device and I'm going to create a little trio. By way of contrast, here's a different set that I've prepared with two tracks of samplers uh, using range of sounds captured with uh, induction coils. And these are sort of internal sounds from laptops and CD drives and uh, other devices. You can hear the, uh, the interference in the air. This would be more of a generative sound design application. And just as a final point of comparison, here's a series of three synthesized drums. Ableton Live is, of course, an infinitely adaptable platform for live performance and for studio-based composition and recording. Um, I think it's really interesting to see how people put this to use in different ways. The chances are, if there's something you've got in mind and Ableton can't do it stock, then you can come up with a solution in Max MSB. Mm -hmm.